Hello and welcome to the 2021 Annual Clinical Assembly for the Annual American College of Osteopathic Ophthalmology Meeting. My name is Dr. Eric Romrell. I was trained by Dr. Robert Peets, Patrick Spencer, and Dr. Shrimp at Grandview Hospital and later went to fellowship in Corpus Christi, Texas at the Retina Associates. I thank all those who have trained me and helped me along my path to get to this destination and final dream. I am a retina surgeon and I work at the Idaho Eye and Laser Center and I hope I can share some of the, the techniques that I use on a day-to-day -day basis to help you in your anterior segment surgeries. The title of my lecture is Tricks from a Retina Surgeon for an Anterior Segment Surgeon. I have no financial disclosures to discuss. My objectives for today's lecture are to show how to place a self-sealing 23 or 25, J, 25 gauge trocar, different situations when a 23 or 25 gauge trocar might be appropriate, how to use a soft tip aspirator for intraocular lens manipulation, a quick review of peribulbar anesthesia and um, subtenon's skin log to help with postoperative inflammation. First, from the beginning of the case, we'll just I'll quickly discuss peribulbar blocks. I like to do uh, peribulbar blocks as opposed to retrobulbar bulbar blocks because I feel they they are minimally safer. I use Westcott's to make a snip incision in the inferior quadrants of the, the globe. I, do, I then use those Westcott's to do blunt dissection and place a 25, 20 gauge blunt cannula into the retro bulbar space. I use two mill, milliliters of two or four percent lidocaine, 0.75 percent marcaine, and one, mill, one um, milligram of Hylinex in a mixture to place into the retro bulbar space. I have recently found that a um, the infranasal quadrant requires minimally uh, uh, dissect, minimal dissection uh, as opposed to the, the temporal quadrant and I have had no sequela from doing this. Once the retrobulbar anesthesia has been placed um, uh, I begin the trocars. I think retrobulbar anesthesia is important as well. Notice in this injection here how the eye moves slightly anterior I think this is important to create a more firm platform so the eye doesn't push down as I place the trocars. Uh, secondly, when um, suturing the globe or for um, suturing scleral buckles, again, the, the globe is more firm so that the uh, technique is, is uh, simplified. After the the patient is comfortably anesthetized. I uh, use trocars to do the, for the following steps. When and why should an anterior surgeon use a trocar? I think this is important to help with posterior vitrectomies if vitreous is has entered into the anterior chamber through some violation of the um, iris. IOL lens um, interface. If the vitreous moves into the anterior caps, the anterior space, and the anterior vitrectomy is performed, it can continue to pull vitreous, much like a person pulling a rope, into the anterior chamber and potentially leading to a retinal tear. Posterior vitrectomies are much safer, but can complicate the the surgical procedure and with a trocar this can be extremely simplified. Once a trocar is in place, which we'll discuss in a moment, the the posterior vitrectomy at the iris lens interface can be simply performed to pull any vitreous away from the anterior component anterior segment of the eye and sever any adhesions so that if vitreous is in the anterior chamber, then it can be safely removed 
after the posterior vitrectomy has been completed. The trocar can also be used to help with a bimanual technique to support a lens fragment or a lens that's falling posteriorly so that a second instrument can be used anteriorly to pull the, the fragment or lens into a position of, of higher safety um, or for removal. Additionally, um, the Alcon Vitrector will fit through a 23 gauge trocar, uh, facilitating a suture free technique um, and vitrectomy. Um, I, the 23 gauge trocars also simplify the surgical surface. Um, and you'll see this when I discuss how 23 gauge trocars could be used for um, IOL fixation techniques. This is the anatomy of a trocar. On the top of the picture, you'll note the Centurion Vitrect 23 gauge Vitrector has a trocar placed on the shaft um, and, and moves nicely. At the bottom, you'll see a knob trader loaded with a 23 gauge trocar. The knob trader has a sharp blade that is designed after the fashion of a diamond blade for um, to make the main incision for the or, uh, cataract surgery. This is important because it doesn't make a hole or a punch through the tissue. Rather, it's more of a linear fashion through the, the planes of the tissue so that when the um, control car is removed, these planes can then line up and, and self-seal much like a clear corneal incision wound, but in the sclera itself. Trocar placement is important. They need to be put similar to a cataract surgeon's incisions in a manner that is ergonomically comfortable for the surgeon. When I place trocars, I place my hands in the position where I will be using the instruments and that that location is where I place a trocar. Once that position has been identified, I measure back 3.5 millimeters posterior to the limbus for a aphagic or pseudophagic patient or 4 millimeters posterior to the limbus for a phagic patient. I then reflect the conjunctiva away from the, the area of placement in a circumferential direction to then I um, place the, the trocar in 45 degrees, roughly 45 degrees from the um, eyeball globe uh, angle in a um, similar to a uh, beveled entry for cataract surgery. Once the trocar is it, or the uptrader um, sharp is placed roughly two thirds through the sclera, I rotate the uptrader to 90 degrees or perpendicular to the globe, enter the eye, and remove the uptrader from the trocar. Be prepared to, when removing the uptrader that if the trocar is not free, freely moving off the trocar, you can inadvertently pull the trocar out. Have tires ready to grasp the, the trocar, then remove the uptrader from the trocar safely so it will not be inadvertently uh, removed as well. The trocar will retract posteriorly um, um, to the similar to the angle of insertion when the uptrader is removed. When the con conductiva is reflected, if the patient has had uh, previous surgeries and the conductiva is not very mo mobile, I will can move the conductiva towards the limbus um, or um, towards towards the, uh, different directions so that, that that quadrant or trocar will have the conductiva moved back over the the wound so that the wound and the conductiva and the wound of the sclera are not continuous for um, um, to facilitate entry of bacteria nor air or fluid to ex to extract or exude through the incision and the conductiva. Here is a video of me placing a infratemporal trocar for a fusion cannula. 
Note how I reflected the conductive circumferentially around the eye. I placed the trocar optrator complex roughly 45 degree angle to the globe in the, retract, in the reflected conjunctiva. Once approximately two thirds through the sclera, I, re, I re, um, rotated the operator trocar complex 90 degrees to the globe and it entered into the eye. Again, this light cataract uh, incisions creates a step type of incision so that it will seal with internal pressure. Um, this is important again to uh, as a protection for um, loss of intraocular material whether it's air or fluid or um, external materials to enter the eye like like in bacterial um, infected tears or, or drops. Again the conjunctiva can be reflected in the circumferential rotation and I try to, to to reflect the conjunctiva um, in the same direction around the eye um, if the, con the conjunctiva has been sur sur surgically altered due to muscle surgeries, um, um, filtering procedures, or retinal or scleral buckles for retinal detachment, um, the conjunctiva may need to be um, moved in an anterior fashion towards the limbus. This is also acceptable, just so that the conjunctiva and the scleral wound do not line up at the end of the case. Use, other uses for trocars are, um, I have had uh, extreme success using 23 gauge trocars with the Yumani technique. Uh, again, um, the large 23 gauge um, board um, cannula um, can accommodate my 25 gauge um, 13 or asymmetric forceps to grasp the tip of the IOL haptic and remove them through the 23 gauge trawl car. And again, because of the, the haptic optrator um, incision is more of a grooved incision um, as opposed to a 25 or 27 gauge needle, which is more of a round incision, um, I, I believe they seal in a much more efficient manner. Um, one trick that I have noted to aid my Yamani technique is I place a small slight bend in the haptic tip um, in, uh, in an out, outer way direction um, to facilitate uh, um, in, in kind of like a barbed fashion so that the IOL again is more difficult to follow through the tunnel and sclera at a future date and, and dislocate into the eye itself. Um, I always preoperatively put a, a, um, a PI um, I recently learned that uh, PIs are very important. Um, additionally, I start with the surgeon's right hand hot, um, haptic because this is an, in an uh, unergonomic direction pointing towards the surgeon's down or towards the patient's feet. Um, the right haptic is can be more difficult to manipulate as a second um, haptic to externalize as opposed to the left haptic which is more ergonomic, pointing up towards the surgeon, so it's much easier to, to grasp and manipulate. Here's a video of me using a uh, using 25 gauge thir number 13 um, uh, forceps to carefully grasp the tip of the haptic. I move the haptic so it's in line with the, the forcep, and then, ex then uh, remove the biome so I can view the external of the eye, Note the surgical surface, how there, with these trocars, there is not a bulk of, of, um, of hardware in, in the surgical plane to interfere with um, the surgical procedure, uh, as I have found with using the 25 or 27 gauge um, large bore needles. Um, once the haptic is, is externalized, I use a cotton tip applicator to help um, hold the um, haptic in place so that it will not inadvertently move or fall back into the, the globe. The left haptic, and you'll note the ping pong style technique, um, 
we'll see here in a moment. Uh, again, grasp the tip of the fork with the, uh, the tw uh, 13 forceps to externalize the, the um, haptic. Just note how it easily falls or is removed. Unfortunately, easily removes, falls back into the globe itself. Here we play ping pong with the haptic tips. Note the the left or, or uh, excuse me the right haptic how it has the uh, external bend to hopefully make it more difficult to fall back into the globe. Once the both haptics have been externalized, the haptics or the uh, Control cars can be simply pulled in their directions um, following the, the incisions and um, haptic tips then um, uh, burns to make the, the large bulb um, so it does not fall back into the eye and um, remove uh, then um, I do a quick 25 gauge uh, vis uh, visualization to ensure that no tears or breaks um, of the retina have occurred through the um, inadvertent um, externalization of the lens and eye haptics. Choke car removal is done in a in similar uh, reverse fashion of placement of choke cards. I use a solid object obturator to place into the choke car lumen, then pull the choke car over the surface um, of the obturator in a reverse fashion. This ensures that no vitreous base is in the, follows the the path of the uh, the tractor or forceps can be incarcerated within the wound at the end of the case. I use a contact tip um, applicator to move the contact, contact table back to its original location so that the surgical incision of the contact table and the sclera are not in direct alignment. If leaks are noted, continue holding pressure for several seconds. Again, to repeat what I did, here I use forceps to enter the wound. I'll pull the obturator, or excuse me, pull the troll car over the um, um, forcep obturator. And here I am placing the conjunctiva um, over, over the wounds, placing pressure. Um, as you'll note, in minimal um, positional change of the infusion cannula, um, that I am increasing pressure um, slightly to, to ensure that there's no wound, no uh, wound leaks. Um, if there were wound leaks, we would see bubbles coming out of the incisions. Um, once I feel the incisions are not um, leaking and are no vitreous incarceration, um, uh, we are done with the case. Note how nice and clean the eye is for minimal um, heme around the incision sites. Another tool commonly used by the uh, retina surgeon is a soft tip cannula. These are important for um, draining fluid through a retinal break, uh, retinotomy, or um, posteriorly um, at the optic nerve to dehydrate the posterior chamber for air fluid exchange. In this case, note how I have reached down with the soft tip increase aspiration to engage the, the lens. I would slightly decrease the infusion and note how the IOL will slide down the the uh, um, soft tip until I'm at the base. If if required to hold at the optic, that is, that is fine. Um, in this case, I repositioned the IOL um, so that it was um, closer to the um, uh, left haptic so the point could be hung on the iris and then um, through a superior enlarged incision the uh, haptic was 
carefully grasped what with and removed um, the later um, anterior chamber lens was was placed. This was prior to my experience of using the 23 gauge stroke cars with the um, Yamani technique. But note how um, as I move the, the lens, it, uh, it uh, has a high degree of control. Um, my anterior segment partners on rare occasions have a lens that is dislocating and they cannot um, grasp the, the um, haptics. Um, okay, we'll use the soft tip to manipulate the lens minimally so the haptic is is um, exposed so they can be later grasped and um, manipulated into a safer safer position. At the end of the case I inject 0.2 cc's or 8 milligrams of subtenone cantaloupe. This is to help with any post-operative inflammation and um, lack uh, and, and the need to not use an additional drop and less expense for the patient. I have had rare instances of of um, uncontrolled pressure, but occasionally I will note uh, a increase in pressure, which can be easily controlled with topical aqueous suppressants. Any questions? Uh, next year, if if uh, I am invited, we can pursue doing a wet lab and further instruction on how to do 23 or 25 gauge trocars.